In this video I'm going to look at reacting amount questions which involve the use of more than one of the triangles. So it might be a, a, a solutions and mass calculation or it might be um, a, a mass and a volume of a gas question. So sometimes in exam questions you, you do see sometimes even all three triangles used. So let's have a go at some of these now just to get our heads around them. So I'm going to use this question. So we're told that solid sodium hydroxide is known as caustic soda. So there's a nugget of information you can add to your store of general knowledge. A student believes that a box of caustic soda is contaminated. In other words, the, the chemicals inside the box aren't just sodium hydroxide. So what did she do? She dissolved 2 grams of the caustic soda in water and made it up to 250 cm cubed. She then took 25 of this solution out and that was used in a titration and she found that 24.6 centimeters cubed of 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed dilute sulfuric acid was required to obviously neutralize the sodium hydroxide. So we've got to calculate the percentage by mass of sodium hydroxide in that impure caustic soda. So like I've done on previous videos, I'm going to use um, pictures of the apparatus to try and bring this to life. So we just visualize the caustic soda first. So this little picture here is trying to get across that the caustic soda is made from sodium hydroxide, if it was 100% sodium hydroxide then obviously that's all you would have in the caustic soda. So the fact that she thinks it's contaminated must mean that there's other stuff in there, other chemicals and that's represented by the green dots there. So the first thing the student's done is she's taken two grams of this caustic soda and she's dissolved it into 250 cm cubed of water and that's obviously going to be done in a 250 centimetre cube volumetric flask. So everything's going to dissolve the sodium hydroxide and the other stuff as well. She's then taken 25 centimetres cubed of this solution out of here and put it into um, a conical flask and she's going to carry out the titration in this conical flask. She's then carried out her titration and she's used 0.1 moles per decimeter cubed sulfuric acid and found that she needed 24.6 centimeters cubed of the acid to neutralize the caustic soda solution in there. So I've cleared the board and made room for the equation. So there's the equation for the reaction between the sulfuric acid and the sodium hydroxide that's in the caustic soda. They've obviously reacted with each other in the titration and there's the balanced equation for that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to calculate the moles of the sulfuric acid that were used in the titration and that's because we have all the information in the question to work out the moles for it. We've got the concentration and the volume so the moles of sulfuric acid equals concentration times volume in decimeters cubed. So that's coming out at 0.00246 moles of sulfuric acid. And we need to bring in the mole ratio now between the, the sulfuric acid and the sodium hydroxide. So one mole of sulfuric acid needs two moles of sodium hydroxide. So this many moles of sulfuric acid will need two times this moles of sodium hydroxide and we get this value here for the moles of sodium hydroxide. Remember, they are the moles present in the titration flask. The sodium hydroxide originated from this flask, so the next step is to work out how many moles of sodium hydroxide are in there. So obviously the moles of sodium hydroxide in the volumetric flask must be 10 times the amount used in the titration because 25 were used in the titration, but the original flask was 10 times bigger. So the moles in the flask will obviously be 10 times the moles in the 
conical flask. Now we know the moles of sodium hydroxide um, in this flask, where did they come from? Well they came from the two grams of caustic soda, so we need to work out well how many how many grams of sodium hydroxide does that many moles equate to? And this is where we bring in our second triangle, the mass triangle. So the mass of the sodium hydroxide in those two grams of caustic soda must equal the moles multiplied by the MR of sodium hydroxide, which is 40, and that's coming out at 1.968 grams. So of those two grams, we now know that 1.968 grams were sodium hydroxide. And the final step is to express the mass of sodium hydroxide as a percentage by mass. And obviously we would do that um, like this. So the mass of sodium hydroxide divided by the total mass of the sample, which was 2 grams, multiplied by 100, gives us a percentage by mass of 98.4%. We'll finish off with this question, which is going to involve all three of the reacting amount triangles. So I'll go through the information in the question, and then we'll go through the solution. So a student's made some calcium hydroxide by adding calcium to water. So there's the equation for the reaction that's taking place there. And we're told that he's added 0 0.00131 moles of calcium to the beaker and it's got about 100 cm cubed of water present. So we're going to concentrate on these, this, this part of the question first. We need to calculate the mass of calcium added and the volume in decimeters cubed of hydrogen that's been produced at room temperature and pressure. We'll come on to this last sentence after that. So because there's a lot of information on the board I'm just going to underline the various parts in different colours and the solution will match that colour. So the mass of calcium that's been added, well we told how many moles the students used, so the mass is simply just the moles multiplied by the MR, so that's coming out at 0 0.052531 and that would be in grams. The volume of hydrogen now, so we are told that the students added 0 0.00131 moles of calcium and you can see from the mole ratio in the equation between the calcium and the hydrogen that's just one to one isn't it so whatever the moles of calcium used well we're going to get the same number of moles of hydrogen made so that feeds into the volume of hydrogen equals the moles times 24 so that comes out at 0 0.03144 decimeters cubed. The last part of the question this is the sting in the tail if you like. So the first two bits, the green and the and the orange parts, were relatively straightforward and we now need to look at this more complicated aspect to the question. So we are told at this point that the solution, so this is carried out in a beaker, it's then poured into a 250ml volumetric flask and made up to the mark. And we have to calculate the concentration of hydroxide ions inside this flask. How do you calculate concentration? Well, you need to know the moles and divide that by the volume. Well, we know the volume is 250 cm cubed, which is 0.25 of a decimeter cubed. So we need to know how many moles of hydroxide ions are inside this flask. So if we go back to the equation here, we know that there were 0 0.00131 moles of calcium used. Now, there's an awkward little mole ratio going on here between the calcium and the hydroxide ions. So you can see the formula of calcium hydroxide there is CaOH twice. So what it's telling us is, for every mole of calcium, we need two moles of hydroxide ions. So you can see I've written up in purple there. Calcium hydroxide is effectively one calcium two plus ion and two hydroxide ions. So how many 
calcium ions will we have? Well, there's a one-to-one -one ratio between the calcium and the calcium ions, so they're going to be 0 0.00131. But the hydroxide ions, we're going to need twice as many of those. So there will actually be 0 0.00262 moles of hydroxide ions in that flask. Now we know the moles of hydroxide ions, and we know what volume they're in, we can turn that into a concentration. So this bit here, this was the key part to getting this last bit of the question right. So I've fed those numbers into concentration equals moles divided by volume, and that gives us a concentration of the hydroxide ions as 0.0105 moles per decimeter cubed.